G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. Today, we're going to be finally having a look at the Reggiane 2005, the plane that I've surprisingly never heard about, but really, really wanted to play. Yes, that's right. The Reggiane 2005 is, well, it's been in the game for a while, and honestly, it's extremely strong. It is one of those planes that is extremely strong, very, very capable, and is able to pretty much do anything at hand. It compares quite well with all the tanks, or the planes rather, that it faces. And it seems to be one of those things that is just able to do everything. In the few games that I've played of it, I haven't really run into issues where, well, since being spaded, having a hard, having a hard time just doesn't really come by. Of course, I'm not entirely spaded, but the Reggiane is extremely powerful. You can see right here, right off the bat, that I'm putting it into a good climb. And you can see that at a climb speed of 280 kilometers per hour, I'm actually maintaining a decent rate of climb. Granted, it's not quite as good as the Spitfires, not quite as good as the P-47s, but against 4.3s and 4.7s, this thing really, really shines. It's one of those planes, and I think, at the moment, it is in a decent spot. For a long time, I've wanted a plane that has some sort of ground strike capability for the Italians, particularly for Tanks RB, and the Reggiane 2005 is more or less that kind of plane. I think later versions of the Reggiane 2005 have better ordnance carrying capabilities, but for now, the capabilities that this thing has in well, for Tank RB, uh, I think they're fine enough. A couple drops of bombs, and that's that's pretty much as good as it's going to get for the Italians. They don't really have that sort of heavy ground attacker-focused role with fighters. For example, like the Americans, where they literally strap bombs and rockets to everything. P-47, P-51, hell, P-38s even get rockets later on. It's crazy what the Americans do to their to their planes, but the Italians don't really follow that sort of line of thinking. They're more for the purebred fighters and the dedicated attackers, kind of like the, uh, the Germans. And so you have that sort of situation where you have really, really good fighters, but not really great attackers. And in Ground RB, that's not entirely ideal. But in Air RB, oh my god, you have some absolutely incredible compositions when it comes to your teams. Almost all fighters, very few attackers, very few bombers. It's really, really strong. And having a bunch of them on my team, whilst you can never rely on a team in an online game, is a lot better than having ground attackers that'll go in, take out a couple of AA and die. And so, what I'm going to do here is the same thing that I always do in every single prop game, climb. And I'm going to climb as much as I need to. Now, I don't want to put myself above every single thing in the game, because then I would be here all day. I would just want to climb until I have enough of an advantage to just beat enough people that it baits the last guy down, and then I can dogfight him. In this case, especially with the Reggiane, because I can dogfight these things. And of course, if you're in a multiple engagement situation where your side is favorable, meaning that you have the numbers advantage, if, say, you have four P-47s versus one BF-109, the chances are at least one of you is going to get that BF-109, if you play it well. If you play it poorly, like my previous video, uh, you may end up just losing the entire match because of it. So, <laughs> well... Regardless, the Reggiane is probably one of those hidden gems, and honestly, the Italian tech tree is just full of these things. No one ever plays them, and no one ever seems to care, but the Italian tree just has so many good planes. The C202 is a fairly strong plane, granted it doesn't have the best weapons. In fact, we can even go as far back as the CR40... Is it the CR42? The biplane? The, the one that, um, there's a premium version that is uh, Markelin's, I believe. And it does have the two uh, 50 caliber machine guns, which are, I believe they're rip-off Brownings, but they, they decided to put like 20% less projectile, 25% um, less gunpowder, basically, in the uh, 
in the casing, which gave it such a lower muzzle velocity that it basically made them spaghetti shooters, which is what we call them in-game. But this particular plane here gets equipped with MG-151s as well, and so you tend to find that the uh, issue that a lot of the early Italian planes have with their weapons tends to get nullified because all of them just end up using MG-151s, and you can see here that I'm not going to put those MG-151s to work, I'm going to evade this F-82, and I'm going to try and bait him up and try and get him to commit to following through, which would leave him in a low speed dogfight, which puts me at the advantage. The F-82 isn't nearly as stupid as I think he is, and he pulls away. So I have a P-38 to go and engage, and I also have the P-47. Now, the Reggiana is actually quite fast at altitude for its tier. It seems to be one of those planes that is able to climb and stay at altitude and dogfight at altitude reasonably well. It's sort of kind of close to the P-47M in some respects. It's close to the tar 152 c as well and the tar 152 h and of course the P-38L and K. These particular planes are all sort of on the same tier and it's really really nice to see a nice good dogfight between a bunch of these planes. Except, we're not really going to be seeing too much of a dogfight because this P-38 is uh, going to run. And, of course, yes he is playing to his advantages, but anyone who doesn't take a fight, I, I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't judge because he's playing his plane to his advantage, but at the same time he allows this P-47 to be left alone with a Reggiane, and I believe I'm in a full down tier here. So this P-47 is now at a bigger disadvantage, not only because he lost his altitude, but he is against a fully up-tiered plane. Or, or uh, I guess, yeah, a fully down-tiered plane, rather. It's not a good look for the P-38. The P-38's just sort of gone off into the distance, leaving everyone else to die. And this is one of the things that you have to consider. Am I doing the same thing to my team? And in some cases, you could argue very well, yes. Look at my team down there in the bottom there, they're getting absolutely slaughtered. P-51, killing the BF-109 G6, and then you have the three guys at altitude there behind me that uh, are not quite playing as aggressively as I would have hoped, but that's okay because it's a one-on-one -on -one in this situation here with me. P-38L, I'm going to try again and try and bait him into turning with me. I'm going to do some gentle evasive maneuvers, going to try and roll over, and you can see here, this is where I make a little bit of a mistake, and instead... Of, uh, of continuing the turn, I should, or oh, instead of reversing the turn, I should have continued it, and so that would have allowed me to get onto the P-38L a little bit quicker. I do hit a tiny part of his plane, which isn't really uh, significant in any way, shape, or form, and he disappears and just flies away. Again, it's a little bit of a smart play, but at the same time, he went and lost all that altitude. He's lost his advantage. Altitude is your advantage in props. So, Getting as much of it as possible is the ideal situation, and my team hasn't really gotten that, and we've pretty much lost that little dogfight there by, uh, I believe it's the ACAP. Now, all of those planes previously go unspotted, and this P-51 obviously isn't seeing me, and you can see that he's just not aware that there is a plane there. The beautiful new fire animation comes into play here, where I set the damn thing on fire and let it burn, there's a, uh, a plane underneath me, and I'm going to go vertical. I'm going to keep my altitude for the uh, P-38, and this P-47, who is slowly, slowly gaining on me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put myself into even more of a vertical, go for a quick cheeky head-on, and then bugger out of there. I do not want anything to do with 850 cals heading my way. So I'm going to turn above him and around him. Hopefully he commits to the turn. And you can see here that he hasn't really. He's gone for the dive, which is a little bit smart, but he's upside down. So <laughs> I'm thinking, well... Maybe that's going to be it for him. Maybe he's he's gone. But it looks like he's going to continue in a straight line, which allows me to close the gap, and you can see he's missing a wing. So if I can finish him off, that stops him from going back to base, rearming, repairing, getting a new plane, and then being just as competent as he otherwise would have been. I put a crit into him. I'm fumbling the shots a little bit. Try a little bit more with the, uh, with the spaghetti shooters, and he's just going to go into the trees anyway. But I decide to put a couple of shots in for good measure. Straight away, as soon as I finish, I go for altitude. I need that altitude because I have a lot of planes that are below me, or behind me rather, 
that have better energy retention than me. So if I can get altitude before them and use a little bit of good climb rate to my ability and keep my speed up at the same time, which the Reggiani can somewhat do, I may just get out of this with an advantage. The F-82 comes in and I'm not going to deal with that at all. So I'm going to turn out, try and get him a, a nice little bait for my, uh, for my friendly there. But instead of going vertical, the friendly ends up baiting him into diving. So that gives me an advantage, allowing me to capitalize on that and get myself a nice kill. Really well played by the friendly there, facing or, or going, going up and going using that altitude. Very, very smart play indeed. So I can see this P-38 and I'm, I'm figuring this P-38 is going to become a hassle for me. I'm thinking he's going to be there all game. Maybe he's going to run. Maybe he's going to, you know, try and find a, a spot where I'm engaged with, with an enemy. And maybe he's going to get the better of me. So I have to be really, really careful. This guy is playing very, not quite, not passively in a bad way. But he is playing passively. He's sitting on the outskirts. He's waiting for an opportunity. And I don't want to be that opportunity. At the same time, I have a P-59 below me. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into a vertical. I'm going to turn out just a little bit so that he bleeds a little bit of energy there. Jets have a lot worse energy retention than props. And you can see that because he has a low speed, he's stalled out right in front of me, giving me that picture-perfect shot just enough to saw his wing off. Not using a lot of ammunition, but just that beautiful shot. Oh, I love it when I get that. It's called a rope-a-dope, for those of you who don't know, because you... <laughs> You rope him into thinking that you're going to stall out first, you stall out after him, and then come in behind him. It's difficult to do when you've got very similar energy to your opponent, but when you're very different like the P-59 and the Reggiane, you can do this sort of thing. And that's my fourth kill. I'm going to try and make it a fifth here because this P-38 is... Uh, I thought he had his, his second wing, so I was going to go for him, but it looks like his wing has been sawn off. And so I'm going to be a gentleman and I'm going to leave it because this is the kind of thing that you do to your teammates. You don't steal that kill because that's that's pretty nasty to be honest and pretty selfish because he's going to go down anyway. Or at least, <laughs> what the hell? He's flying in a straight line. I, th I thought he was going to go down and I was like, very well done. Well done. We've got a couple more enemies left. You know, the game's almost over. You've gotten a nice kill on a P-38. So... <laughs> I'm going to have to chase this guy down. My engine's burning, and it looks like he's put himself into a turn. Now, I'm not going to shoot until he gets really close, and I can see he's going to hit the ground if he's not careful. So I'm going to let him get nice and close. He's going to turn to try and evade me, and then he hits the dirt. That gives the uh, friendly plane a kill. And you know what? I'm not mad, because I'm not going to take a kill like that. I would have much rather that he had crashed into the dirt, which he did, obviously, and... Uh, you know, resulted in a nice little uh, little kill for the other guy. It's not that it's not because I'm grinding, because I still have the vampire and the uh, CL13 to research, and the and the F86K. So I do have stuff to research. It's just that I don't want to give that that, or I don't want to take that kill when the hard work was done by that BF109. And I would much rather have uh, you know just been a spectator. And I think a lot of people don't really get that, especially in jets. There are so many vultures, and it's just extremely frustrating. Someone's set on fire, and it's being kill stolen like it's arcade all over again. And that's just not something you do in realistic battles at all. Because there are only 15 players on the board, only a maximum 15 kills. And if someone does that hard work, well, it's kind of yours. And you should, you should uh, well, if you do the hard work. If you don't do the hard work, then it's really none of your business. But... Speaking of hard work, that last kill wasn't hard work at all. The Reggiane does shred bombers, and it shreds fighters alike. The MG-151s are some of the best guns in the game just because of that. I really, really just absolutely love MG-151s, because they just, they do so much damage. And running air target belts, perfect. Couldn't get a better plane at 5.3. I think we have an absolute winner for the top plane at 5.3. Maybe a Spitfire could beat it out, but... There isn't really a Spitfire at 5.3. There's a Seafire, but they're not really that great. Anyway, ladies and gents, that is the Reggiano. It is a very capable plane, and if you want to fly it, just go for the uh, Energy Fighter playstyle. It works extremely well because the plane is extremely competent. But until then, thank you very much for watching. Take care, and I'll catch you next time.